Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day, g'day. I'm Sarah Williams. Thanks for joining me for episode 20 of Write With Love. I'm recording this on Sunday, February 10th, 2019. Yeah, I'm back doing these introductions. If you don't want to hear them, you are free to skip ahead, but I've had people saying that they miss them, so here I am. So what's new with me? My latest novel, The Dairy Farmer's Daughter, is still 99 cents for the digital copy. This is because I have various promotions going on Kobo and Amazon. I will move the price back up, probably by the end of the month, but right now it's selling heaps of copies every day and sitting at number one in a bunch of categories, so I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. I am writing The Legacy of Brigadier Station, which is the third in my Brigadier Station series. It's not as far through as I would have hoped by now, but I have scheduled writing time in this week and I hope to get my word count up so I can release it in May. Big news that I'm sharing with you first is that number two of The Heart of the Hinterland is underway with a scheduled release date sometime in July. How can I plan to release two books in two months, you ask? That's because I'm co-writing it with another fabulous Australian author, Michelle Dalton, author of Epona, which I will talk more about in a moment. She is already working on Greer's story, set here in Mulaney, and I'm working closely with her to create a 50 to 60,000 word novel, which I'm sure my readers will love. So who is Michelle Dalton? Originally from Pretoria, South Africa, Michelle Dalton and her family fled the rising violence, taking over her beloved country and now lives near Brisbane, Australia, with her husband and triplet sons. While also juggling a nursing career and teenage sons, she loves to escape into her fictional worlds. Michelle has a deep love of horses and enjoys weaving them into dramatic stories with honourable men and strong women. Her other hobbies are gardening, usually trying to save her precious herbs and bulbs from an overactive miniature Jack Russell, painting and reading. She's also a huge Star Trek and Marvel Comics fan and, as of recently, a wee fan of DC too. So this is her book, Epona, thanks to Lana for another beautiful cover. Uh, Epona was published under My Small Press, Serenade Publishing, and was released in January. It's sitting pretty on the Amazon charts and is available to purchase for 99 cents and to read for free with Kindle Unlimited. The book description is, can she overcome the trauma of her past and find redemption in the wild Scottish Highlands? After a horrendous attack on her family farm in South Africa takes the lives of her beloved ones, and leaves her wounded, her only escape is to leave the country of her birth for the highlands of Scotland and her last living relatives. But Sadie's life may still be in danger. Blaine Buchan is an Englishman living in the small highland town of Lerig. Seeking a life away from the emptiness of London society and a past he'd rather forget. When Sadie finds a mysterious blue rowan mare, she must use the gift given to her from Epona, protector of horses. But the mayor just might be the one who saves her. From the mountains of South Africa to the wintry highland moors, this is a story of redemption, love and the powerful connection between humans and horses. As I said, it's available on Amazon, but if you would like one of these beautiful paperbacks, let me show you again, isn't it beautiful? I love it. If you'd like one of these beautiful paperbacks, or you read on another platform like Kobo or Apple Books, you can contact me via social media or my website, and I'll arrange to send you a copy. Michelle will be on the show in a couple of weeks for a chat, so stay tuned. If you would like to join me at the trendy beachside town of Noosa on October 18th to 21st, 2019, I'm hosting a writer's retreat. 
It's strictly limited to six people and we will be writing, talking craft and having fun. I will also show you how to make the most out of your advertising budget and boost your sales. All the details are on my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com. The Australian Romance Readers Association, ERA, will be hosting a romantic rendezvous in March where readers can meet their favourite romance authors and get books signed. Locations and dates are Brisbane the 23rd, Sydney the 24th, March 30th and Perth 31st of March. I will be at the Brisbane signing and would love to see you there. I will have all my books as well as lots of free stuff for you and if you're a patron you can claim your hug. The Arrow website is ireadromance.com. If you love Australian rural romance then this is your last month to buy Outback Hearts for only 99 cents. Annie Seaton, Suzanne Bellamy, Suzanne Gilchrist, Anne B. Harrison, S.M. Spencer, Philippa Neffrey-Clark and myself have joined forces for a combined Kindle-only box set called Outback Hearts. It is available until the end of February 2019. Then it's gone for good people. A new box set will replace it with a bunch of new authors and it's up for pre-sale now. It's called Outback Heroes and you can check that out now. It will be released on all digital platforms on February 27th, still for 99 cents. And again, only for three months. If you are an author who would like a shout out on the show for as little as $25, send an email to me, sarah at sarahnadepublishing.com or become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author for more information. Today's author in residence is none other than Rachel Van Dyken, number one New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and USA Today best-selling author. I learned a lot from Rachel, and if you love romance, you'll love Rachel. So enjoy the show, and I'll see you next week. G'day, and welcome to Write With Love. Today on the show, I'm chatting to a very special guest, which is Rachel Van Dyken. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. No worries. So you are a New York Times, number one, Wall Street Journal, and a USA Today best-selling author of Regency, Contemporary, and basically every kind of romance. <laughs> okay, I like that. like <laughs> that. That's how you can update your website, everything. <laughs> So I'd love for you to tell us more about yourself and your writing journey so far. Awesome. Well, I am a 33. I have a wonderful son, awesome husband, and I started writing about 10 years ago, I want to say, like right when self-publishing was starting to get really intense and um, when everyone kind of like flocked to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote, um, I started with indie publishing and then I um, started doing traditional publishing um, and it was kind of, and ever since then, it's kind of been both the best of both worlds. I do hybrid publishing, so I do a couple book deals a year, and then I do my own stuff that I can have control over, um, just because I kind of like having that other side of things. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's been, I feel like it's been one year, not 10 years, because it's been, it goes by so fast, you know, because you go from, from this book release to this one to this one, like, there's never any, like, pause in between. Mm. So, so it's kind of weird to look back and be like, oh, that's staggering. It's been a while. But, yeah, that's kind of my journey. It's, it's you started at Regency, and now I'm writing, like you said, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you started off in Regency. So were you reading a lot of Regency, and that was kind of a natural progression? Yeah, I was actually a school counselor at the time, and I worked for the state um, here in Idaho. So I worked with kids that had a lot of debilitating mental disorders um, as far as like, you know, they have like multiple personalities or they had severe depression or anxiety. And what I noticed was that they did better when we went to the library and read and that's how they learned new behaviors. And that's how I was able to kind of, in, you know, impact them in a way that was more positive and they were in a safe environment. So um, I started having them read books. And then in the meantime, when they were doing some of their work, I was reading my own books and I got obsessed with Julia Quinn, like obsessed <laughs> <laughs> where I was like, like, I met her finally last year I was like oh my gosh what do I do like shaking it was bad um <laughs> but yeah this is her and then Eloisa James and Lisa Cleopath like I just I just like I was just mesmerized by these Regency romances and so I was like I should do that which is dumb because I don't know what made me think I could do it so um in between times when I would have clients at school when I had downtime I would write like a chapter or two 
Um, and honestly, like as every writer can attest to, you're like, no one's ever going to read this. No one's ever going to buy this. Grandma will buy 10 copies for Christmas, but that's it. And so I had ended up submitting that to an indie house and that's how everything kind of took off. Yeah. Awesome. So it was really that first book that you wrote that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's great. So often you hear about people with, you know, 10 books in the closet that is <laughs> never going to see <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so indie house, you um, used a, a service or a small kind of, how did that all work? So they were a brand new publisher. They were doing, it, again, it was right when everyone was publishing. There was all these crazy small indie presses mm-hmm. that were taking on um, on authors and they were, um, called, they were called Australia Press. And they were brand new and they did a lot of like sweet romance like that was their niche and so um when i submitted it was it was more like my my regencies are more sweet romance and so i submitted and um they were the first people to say like hey i want to take a chance on you and my manuscript was like i can't even i can't even think about it because it was so horrible like i didn't even have chapter breaks like oh. <laughs> that's how bad it was it's like it was back and like please don't read these books but i mean they're free now they're edited now but i mean at the time it was she really did take a chance on me and I was really really grateful for that and so she basically just there was no um author advance or anything like that she just took you know a a portion of the royalties and and my second book that I had with her is one that hit USA Today and so that yeah it was crazy oh my gosh (laughs) so how how fast do you write are you several books a year I at this point write 12 to 16 books a year wow um but but I, I preface that with saying like it's not a job to me. Like I genuinely am obsessed with writing. It's like reading. Like I can't, if I don't have time to read, I get very, very agitated. If I don't have time to write, I get very anxious. Mm -hmm. And so, and because I'm very high anxiety, struggle with panic attacks a lot, my way of dealing with that and with my emotions is writing and putting it in my, and killing people and like (laughs) putting it into like the writing. And so that, so really like to me, it's not a job. And so like, I always tell people like, don't think that like, it's because I'm trying to keep up or it's because I feel like I have to. It's mm-hmm. because if I don't, I, a part of me dies inside. So, oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm, I'm guessing you're probably not watching a lot of Netflix and that sort of thing. No. no. <laughs> I, here's the problem. Then I get addicted to like Game of Thrones, which I am. And then I'm like watching that and I'm like, I'm on deadline. And then I'm up till like 4 a.m. and I have a toddler to it, you know. So yeah, that's a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we'll, we'll take it back. So you were writing uh, Regency romances, and they were doing pretty well. Obviously, you got on um, USA Today best selling list. So congratulations! <laughs> so did you keep going with that, or when did you decide to kind of start jumping in through these different genres? You know, it's kind of crazy. My my Regency romances, the publisher that I was with, was very weird about me using um you know any sort of I couldn't use the word bloody like that which is weird but I couldn't use like language they thought was not good I couldn't say oh my gosh like I couldn't say any of those things and I felt like it was very it just made it to my so my creative process couldn't be what it needs to be because I'm always a believer of like write what's real don't sugarcoat anything yeah because you know I tell my husband all the time I'm like you know when you watch movies you don't think Keanu Reeves is a murderer like you don't you know think that so when an author writes stuff like that it's not like you think that's how they are but people just can't separate that yeah. and I feel like that sure couldn't and so I ended up writing this book called The Bet, and um, it was based on my, actually, my, real, my grandma in real life who just passed away this last year, and I wanted to write about this crazy grandma and this girl that grew up and fell in love with the boy next door, but actually loves his brother, and it was like this whole thing, and I gave it to them, but it did have some sex and cursing in it, and they said no, and then some the agency that represented that publishing house sent it to a, an agent, and they also said, the publisher said no, and so I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to self-publish, and... I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know how to get an ISBN or anything. So I ended up publishing it and it was on the New York Times list for weeks. And that's the one that hit number one on the New York Times like a year and a half into my writing. So oh I mean, it's, I always tell people this, like, this is not normal. So don't be <laughs> and just like indie publishing was just, I mean, there was a lot of us that really, you know, had that happen to them. And so, you know, it's totally a different game these days. But it was one of those things that it just, it opened my eyes to like being able to do it on my own. Um, and that's when I got my agent and also got my first book deal was when that happened. And also my agent helped me decide. She was like, you want to be a hybrid. You don't want to do just traditional or just indie. You want to have your, you know, the best of both worlds. And so she is like incredible. And she's the reason that I'm even able to still publish because she had so much wisdom when everything was so chaotic. And so that's, I mean, that's kind of the story of how everything happened. Yeah. Oh, that's really fantastic. So are you still writing any, um, of the Regency? You're still doing that? I, you know, I love reading it. I don't think I'm good enough. Like, I I know that sounds crazy, but, like, I look back and I'm like, 
it was okay. Yeah. Like, it was passable. But now, I'm like, my sister writes now, and she writes amazing Scottish romances, and I'm like, oh, I hate you, because it's so much better than this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but, like, you know how you just start to realize, like, this is not maybe my gift in life. Like, maybe I need to be writing, you know. So I love, I love writing it, and it's really fun for me. But I also am fully aware how harsh that Regency readers can be, because I'm that way, and I get that, where it's someone puts the word in okay, and you're like, well, that wasn't invented until 1770, you know? So it's like, it's one of those things that it's just a lot harder, and you have to have a different thought process, and your sentence structure is completely different than when you're writing contemporary. So recently, what I've been doing is writing paranormal as like a palette cleanser, mm -hmm. and then doing yeah. contemporary and my mafia romance, you know, swapping all those out so that I can kind of like refocus. But I read Regency like an addict every day. <laughs> I still love it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Wow. So, yeah, you do have a lot of books. I think we worked out 18 sets of series um, plus a whole bunch of standalones. So we're talking around about 77 books, which is incredible. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so we'll talk uh, about those heat levels. So obviously those early regencies are really sweet. Um, so you're more contemporaries. Um, what are we talking there? How, how hot are they? You know, I don't know how to explain them. So my my most recent books, like in the last two years, are the sexiest I've ever written. So I would say, oh, man, like heat level of one to ten, I would say like seven. Because I don't write, you know, I don't go full erotica on anything. Mainly because I don't think I'd be good at it. I think I would be horrible. So like anyone that can, I'm always like mad props because I could not, because I just, I think I'm too awkward. Because whenever I write sex scenes, I'm always like, how do they do this? I don't even know. Like, what is, what is sex? I don't know. So like, I get very confused. And so... I don't think I would be good at it. Um, so yeah, they're both my contemporaries recently. My paranormals are all pretty sexy, pretty hot. Open door sex scenes, um, multiple sex scenes, not just one. Usually three to six. Um, yeah, and it's slow, a lot of them are slow, slow burns, slow build. Um, and my mafia ones too. They start off very young adult, right? Uh, new adult, and then like the last few books have been very, very sexy. But it's because the characters grow too, and I think that you have to take ownership of that. Like if a character is you know, now 22 instead of versus like 18, like they're going to have different life experiences and stuff. And, and I write very character driven books to where I don't even know what's going to happen. Like I don't, I don't plan anything. I just let them tell me what's going to happen. And then I write it down and I'm like, cool, good job. So <laughs> it just totally depends on the book. But yeah, recently my, my heat level is a lot higher than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. And so you are, you are still doing some indies and then you've got these publishing contracts as well. This, mm -hmm. this one that we're going to talk about, which you're very lucky enough to be with Skyscape, which is an Amazon publishing company. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I love them. They're, they're anything with Amazon publishing. I feel like people, I feel like I've drank the Kool-Aid because I know everyone's like, ah, Amazon. But anytime an author asks me about like, what's a great publisher to work with? And I'm like, Amazon, because they get it, because they're the ones that started it. Do you know what I mean when it came to indie publishing? So they understand the marketing that we want as indies. They understand that we want those push notifications, that we need them to, you know, do the algorithm on our behalf, you know, with everything. And so, like, for example, when I get my marketing, I get my marketing um, strategy from them, and it's like six pages long. And with my other publishers, it's not even a page. Like, it's like, <laughs> and I look at it, and I'm like, they're like, make sure you tweet. Like, that's what they tell you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what, do, what does that even mean? Like, make sure you tweet. Like, that's so 2011. I don't know what you're telling me to do right now. So at least with Amazon, they're at least they're really ahead of the times. And I really, really like that. And I love how, like, I can text my editor, you know, in the middle of the night and she's going to answer me. Like, it's not that I would because I'm not high maintenance like that. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just really, really appreciate them as a publisher. And they've done nothing but just helped me so much. So, yeah, yeah I love them. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm always in awe of people with Amazon. I'm like, if I was going to get a traditional deal, like, it would probably be there. <laughs> and, and honestly, like, I know they have that scout program. They have tons of ways to get in. Like, once you're in, like, that's something that I would never do. <laughs> so, yeah, Amazon is the, is the key. That's it. And, and like you said, so you can write, what are you doing, one book a year for them? So I do, so my last contract with them was four books, cool. but they're, they don't all release in one year because Skyscape is a smaller press than Mount Lake. Mm. They usually do 12 books a year, I think, and that might even be changing. And so typically they release two or three in that calendar year and then one, say, in like January, February. So they're all pretty close to each other, but they're only duets too. They don't contract long series. They contract either standalones or duets for me. So I'll do like a duet and then another duet that release close together, which is what I'm doing, what, I just, what I'm doing now. Yeah so, yeah, so when you're saying duet, what does that mean exactly? So basically, I have, like, the book coming out in March is Risky Play, and it's about a soccer player. So it's his book, and it's about a couple, 
And then there's really strong secondary characters in that book that you then were like, oh, I want to know what happens with them. And then the next book will be just about them. But they're both complete standalones within the series, and there's no book past that. So it's just two books about two different couples that are related to each other, basically. Excellent. So, so what are the yeah. size of those books? Are they kind of short novels? or? Um, no. Typically, um, especially traditional, they want you to have at least 60 to 90,000 words. Yeah. And with my Skyscape ones, they're typically around seventy to 80,000. So they're a good almost 400 pages. I mean, they're... They're long. They're not short stories or anything. And they're, like I said, they're they're ones that you could pick up if you pick up the second book, not the first, and you wouldn't be lost. You'd be like, oh, great. So, and I mean, that's what they want because it, statistics and, like, what they've done and researched with being Amazon is that the longer your series tail is, the longer money you make over time. But a lot of times, if, depending on the price point, like, if you're on book, like, six or seven, people start to fizzle out because it's such a huge commitment to them that they can't just do all seven books you know what I mean yeah. and so for them marketing wise it's more money for them to invest so a lot of times they just do a shorter do what so that they make their money the author makes the money and the reader's happy yeah. so yeah. I love that idea I'm definitely going to try that out <laughs> <laughs> all right so what other um you're doing some young adult um what else tell us about the others <laughs> actually working on mafia right now i was in the process of torturing someone before we started talking um my mafia books my evil elite series is my best-selling series of all time we're on book like 12 as i just talked about like long series but it's mine it's, it's my actually um, hashtag group owns the first two books grand central and then i own the rest of them and it's just been this like cult following that for these books and i don't know why um i don't i don't know like it's been i mean i wrote the first mafia book back in 2011 and i mean it's you know like what like so many years later and we're still we're still in the series and so um i'm finishing up the final book in that series and then i'm going to be starting the series about the kids um so yeah the final book about the italian mafia um i think i think at the time the reason that it started doing it was did so well is because it was a lot of like these guys bullying and kind of being like they're in control of this university and it's like like <laughs> My readers kept calling it like Hogwarts meets Gossip Girls. It was very like, you know what I mean? Like dramatic and intense and like these young tatted up dudes that are like 20, 21 are mob bosses and it's super violent. And so, yeah, so I'm working on that now and it's my favorite. It's like my baby. It's my favorite series ever to write in. And so I always have to like, I always have to wait because I have to do deadline books and I'm like, oh good, I can write Moppy. <laughs> now <laughs> oh it's fantastic and now you also have a movie which is very exciting so you've got the matchmakers playbook which is on passion flicks mm-hmm. how did that, that all was- come around that so i don't even know how that came around actually we just got my agent got contacted and in the lovely amazing joni who does all the screenwriting for them and does screenwriting for like hallmark and lifetime um is an avid romance fan like she reads non-stop romance and so she had read it and liked it and so then they contacted me about, you know, producing it and about making the movie. And so um, it's one of those things that when you sign the contract, you're like, yeah, okay. Because you never know in the book world. Like, you can have one day where you're like, this is amazing. All these things are going to happen. And the next day it's like, wah, wah. Like, it's it's very, very up and down. And so I wasn't sure if it would happen. And I honestly did not believe it until I arrived on set last year. And I was like, okay, it's <laughs> happening. Um, so I was set um, December, not this last December, but December, December before that. Um, and they shot for three weeks and it, it was awesome. It was such a fun experience. And the books, the Matchmakers Playbook is, it's like a heat level, like a five or a six. Like it's very like in between. It's supposed to be fun college romance. I mean, nothing stressful. You read it and you're not like, oh no, what's going to happen? You're just like, I want, I want it to be something you have fun with. It's about two guys that are match, own a matchmaking company in college. And like one used to work or work was drafted by the NFL and got injured. And so, and then his friend is like a really hot nerd. And so like, it's about their journey trying to match women with like their perfect matches. And it's just, it's just a fun, fun book. And it was super fun being on set, super fun seeing everything get executed. And, and they did contract the second one. So we're hoping that the second one starts filming soon. Well, that's so exciting. I know for me, it's a big dream to, I'd be quite happy with passion flicks. (laughs) You know, (laughs) that's a dream. I watch enough TV. It would be awesome to get that. (laughs) You do a really, really good job. Like I know the protector, Jody Ellen is Mm -hmm. coming out. Uh, in February and so I'm really excited to see that one too and they've done I feel like every movie they do gets better and better and better but I think to that just you know when you're a new business that's what happens it's just like with the author like each book hopefully you get better and better and better and so it's been exciting to see how they're how they're going yeah yeah that's it that's awesome so you've got uh Risky Play which comes out in March 2019 tell us about this one this I okay so I don't know anything about soccer let me just preface it with that (laughs) But for some reason, I really wanted to, like, write. 
about this European soccer star because I'm like, it's really sexy and like, I just, I don't know why I want to write this. I'm not really reading a lot of those sort of books right now. And so I was like, we're going to do it. My publisher was super supportive, <laughs> thankfully. And yeah, it's about uh, mistaken identity. So this guy, Slade Rodriguez, is like known all over the world. And this girl, Mackenzie DuPont, is um, an heiress to this wine. I live where there's a lot of wine. And so she's an heiress to like this wine dynasty. And they meet on a plane. They give each other fake names. And she had just gotten left at the altar by her fiance. And she's a virgin, which sound, I know sounds super cliche, but he was always like really respectful of her and her father and stuff. And so she's trying to take like this wild, like the honeymoon that she never had. And she meets this guy on a plane. Plane almost crashes. And so he basically like taunts her and she doesn't know he's famous, you know, to like, you know, what is your one regret before they're crashing? He asked her this or she asked him that. And so they end up being in like suites right next to each other. So they have a one night stand. And then I'm not going to tell you what happens, but something happens to where he has to fly home. She feels abandoned. And then she ends up actually, her father owns a company that does like a lot of high, high profile assisting for like athletes. And they live in the same town now in Seattle. And she ends up taking time off because she doesn't want to see her ex fiance anymore from like where she, because they used to work together. And she starts working for this guy and not realizing, and he thinks she's stalking her. And they both had fake names and he knows each other are. And it's like this whole like miscommunication but like tons of sexual tension, but he's blaming her for things that's not even her fault. And he's very angry and volatile. And then she feels like it, he wasn't even being real with her. So like, it's this whole thing um, takes place in Seattle. And it's really fun because you have, I love like an enemies to lovers. And I love how it starts off where you're like, this is like such a beautiful romance. And then all of a sudden it's like broken. And these two characters are trying to find a way to get past all their hurt. But at the same time, like fighting their feelings and learning how to trust and she doesn't want to trust him. And yeah, it's great. It's awesome. It's one of my favorite ones I've written for my publisher and forever. And consequently, my editor said it's her favorite I've ever written. So that makes me really happy. So I'm hoping people like it as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and this one is with Amazon. So it's only available on Amazon. Cool. So <sighs> I think. Whenever they do release week, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the paperback, they drop the price for people mm -hmm. on other, or on, uh, like on Barnes & Noble and, and Apple Books and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, and yeah, so it is out on paperback as well. So I know yeah. sometimes us Aussies, we have a bit of an issue with Amazon sending us paperbacks and stuff. So, um, sure. Yeah. Audio, you can do audio, which is my new favorite. So. Yes. Is it on audio? Will it be? It's on audio too. Yay! I love audio. I'll do. I'll be downloading audio. Who have you got um, doing the narration? Do you do you know? No, I don't know. I haven't even looked. It's already <laughs> done. It's already up on uh, pre-order. They who do they usually use? Sebastian York has done several of my books. Yeah. Um, Jeremy. I'm trying to think who else. Nick. Is his name Nick? 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 Mm. Something. Now I'm like, and then Andy has done a couple of my books. I'm trying to think. Andy Art, who yeah, I love. Yeah. Um, no, I interviewed yeah. Andy Arndt last year, and she was incredible. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's one of them. <laughs> like they, they do a really good job getting a lot of times the people that are that people really like. Yeah. And I and my books are very dialogue heavy, which Amazon is aware of. So I like people to have really good comedic timing to where it doesn't sound forced. And those people are like incredible. So you know, you want it to be like a movie, not like this awkward, weird. <laughs> Yeah. It can be yeah. audiobooks either are like awesome or they're horrific. So yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> they have really scary. <laughs> yeah, oh that's so exciting. I'm totally gonna go and download it. <laughs> oh <laughs> now copies, I will send you one, okay? Oh yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> now, um you're a mom of a gorgeous little boy and you yeah. have one of the hottest husbands <laughs> I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, everyone needs to go on your Instagram site and just go. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I often I tell you at signings I often get told I have never read any of your books, but I follow you because of your son and husband and I'm like, that's okay. That's totally understandable. <laughs> that's enough. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> so it's he must be just inspiration on a stick for you there. Do you not just like Yeah. He says that to everyone. Like that that's my cross to bear because he's always telling people, Do you know where this character and I'm like, No, stop. But he really is. He's amazing. He actually I mean, he came up with my whole Mafia series concept. He was like, I don't want to read this Regency stuff. I want you to, I want to read stuff like this. You should write this. And at the time I was like, I can't write suspense. He's like, yeah, you can. And I mean, yeah, he's, he literally, I mean, the other day I was trying to plot a brand new book and I was super stressed out and he's like, oh, just do this, this, and this, and we'll do this. And he's like going off on these rabbit trails. And I'm like, what are you, what? Like he's, if he could write, he says he can't, if he could, he would have so many bestsellers or he has so many good ideas. So inspirational, yes, to look at, he's awesome and he's very hot. But also like very intelligent and very supportive, which I feel like is so 
rare in this day and age. Like when it, I'm, I'll always be like, hey, babe, can I have a couple more minutes? I'm on a chapter. And he was looks at me like, what? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, it's not, I'm not watching our kids. Like, that's my privilege. Like, that's, yeah. like, it's not, like, his whole mindset is like, it's 50 50. Like, we're parents. Like, that's what we do. Like, you know, so he's just so wonderful. I love him. That's so, oh, that's so nice. And is he in the publishing industry or anything like that? He is. So he owns Book Deal Publishing, which is an indie publisher that really tries to help brand new authors starting out. The biggest thing for them is. It, it, as you know, it can get very expensive, and, and a lot of authors, when you're starting out, you don't know what to do. You don't know, like, do I need to have a matching ISBN? Do I need to upload here? Like, what does this mean? How do I market this? And so he started this company based on the fact that new authors would need help doing that and also financial help. And so he fronts all the costs to publish and then publishes books and takes a percentage of the books and royalties um, and has close to 50 authors that he has um, underneath him right now. So, yeah. So he does that in his free time and then does competitive CrossFit and then says um yeah helps me out like with all my stuff so yeah <laughs> excellent so what was the name of the business it just kind of cut out then it's, sorry it's blue tulip publishing blue tulip publishing awesome that sounds good he's Dutch, so he's like tulips I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so what are you working on at the moment so right now i'm working on my mafia book. i'm all, okay so i'm yep. working on a mafia book and i'm also working on paranormal which yeah. is totally opposite um my paranormal is just my i wanted to write about vampires and i was like i should do that so i did and you know like i think this happens a lot like you start writing something and you're like it's just gonna be one book and now i'm like we're six books in so that's good so i'm writing the final book in that series about a demon who got his soul back and i'm very excited about that um yeah so i'm writing that and then i'm like i said i'm writing my mafia one right now too. fantastic so. and all of your books are under rachel van dyke and you're not using pen names or anything I actually do have a secret pen name that no one knows about. Okay. But, well, do, <laughs> do you want to tell us? <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because the only people that actually know who it is or what the pen name is are in Australia. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> you can talk to me give me books and you, maybe you can get give me books to give you some insider information on that. They're the only ones that know because they figured it out. It was really funny because the way I responded to my emails, I was like, awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you so much. Where can we find you online and keep up with all of your books? I am super easy. You can find me just Rachel Van Dyke and author.com. It's just as it's, as it sounds like it spells. Yeah. And I'm also on Instagram. My favorite places are Facebook and Instagram. So on Instagram, I'm at Rachel VD and on Facebook, just Rachel Van Dyke. And, yeah. and it's my personal profile and real name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to hide here. <laughs> oh, that is thank. That is absolutely fantastic. I've learned so much and really enjoyed this. So thank you so much, Rachel. Well, thank you for having me. It was really fun. No worries. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author and remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.